All right, welcome back. Got a new devlog. Uh, done quite a few things. Uh, probably see a little bit over there and over there. Um, but yes, I'll, I'll start with the small things. Um, I've turned off shadowing for point light sources. Uh, they were indeed uh, very heavy, as much as I like point light source shadows. Um, I've got some new lighting shadows here. Uh, they're not necessarily exactly what I want, but they definitely look nicer. Um, I used the next gen shadow something, NGSS. Um, you can see I've got the got some new graphics here. This is admittedly taken straight from the pack, the Space Graphics Toolkit pack. Um, so they don't. I haven't really tweaked them to exactly be, um, you know, something that really fits aesthetically. A lot of it is still kind of placeholder, but like it's not like wildly off what I would want but you know I still need to customize it to be what I would like um, but let's start off with some of the things I've done a while ago we'll back up and have a look at this example space station right here um, didn't really need to move the ship to do this but yeah, why not um, you know get another look here of the, of the star there's a gas giant way over there some other tiny asteroids there. Might need to zoom in to actually get a good look at them. But anyway, all right, so we've less left the ship. All right, we're over here. And we've got this wacky space station. Ooh, come on, here. And we've got these lines on the ground which indicate different up directions, or effectively a different direction of gravity. So, yeah, there we go. Now we're facing up here. Um, uh, jump, you can see, Ooh. where's the ship, there's the ship, um, and walk back, yeah, so I haven't fully realized exactly how I want to make use of this, but I did want to build space stations where they would be, maybe not twisty, uh, the twisty graphic, uh, graphics, the twisty gravity was like, uh, kind of just wanted to test it out, but I don't think I would necessarily use twisty gravity so much it's a it's a it's maybe a little bit uh mind not even mind bendy just disorienting that's the word it was more i kind of potentially would have it that if you have a space station it could be like a cylinder and you could walk on the inside of a cylinder it would be more for that sort of stuff um so yeah let, let's get back in the ship though so yeah as part of that um, so that that was one thing that took a bit of time. One of the things I had to do there was change the uh, player to be a rigid body thing, rigid body instead of using the character controller, which you know has its own potential issues. But you know, we'll we'll, we'll work we'll work through them. It's also still kind of prototypey. Let's have a closer look at this planet. Um, you may or may not notice everything is much greater distances now. Uh, another thing that I'm using from the Space Graphics Toolkit is the floating point origin. So basically, everything is actually... Uh, you know what? I should probably give a better... <laughs> nice rundown. There we go. There's a nice visual example of how there's a near camera and a far camera. Um, I don't actually know how to change this just yet. Not change it. Fix it. Um, that comes from the edge highlighting. Um, you know. Yeah. But anyway, that for now it's a good indicator of where the boundary is between the near camera and the far camera. Um, but yeah, let's land here. There's no landing gear. And the atmosphere is apparently, is not apparently, but it is quite thick. But we can get out. And the one thing I haven't done yet is make it that it realizes that you <laughs> are actually on a planet. Um, so it does know what gravity is. It does. That's how it knows what the up direction is. Inspector, there it is. It still thinks we're in space. Ooh, that window doesn't come up. You know what? That's okay. There's a window here. It's not being captured. There you go. You say now we're in not in space. Ah, see, now it knows that we're on here. I just haven't gotten around to really identifying this yet. Um, I'm partially because I'm still not a hundred percent sold on if I want planet surfaces to walk around on It's a big thing. It's a big scope But I kind of like the idea of being able to come down land pick up something put it in your ship and take it back into space 
Uh, so again, that's the point of prototyping. I kind of I like it, um, but let's see. Anyway, let's take off. Shoom, back into space. I, I also need to have a better transition between the two. Something, I need to have it that the, uh, what's the word, the engines, you know, maybe maybe the engines need to be a little bit less uh, powerful in, you know, have it where it's like you actually do slow down in the atmosphere, make it a bit nicer transition between the two. Um, but yes. So, yeah, there is gravity on there. It's kind of hard to show off. Because um, it's a big sphere. Um, but yes, that is a gas giant over there. Um, let me show you what this actually looks like in scene. Okay, we're back. So, if we see here, started the game again, another scene. So, if we see here, we've got the ship here, it's relative to everything else. But if I move back, hey, everything else kind of shifts, right? And it almost looks like it almost looks like the scene view is slowly following the camera, right? There's an interesting depth thing going on there in the game view. <laughs> um, that's probably just because of an editor issue. Anyway, um, yes, you can see it looks like that the ship is sorry. It looks like the scene view is following the ship, but it's not. Um, if you look at the numbers in the top right in the transform, they're always being reset. So basically, what this is doing is a system that basically always keeps um, keeps the whether basically where you're trying to focus on the player um, close to the origin of the actual game world. Uh, if we open up this, there we go. We've got the floating point object here. Gonna need some less zoom ins. So you can see this actually has the big numbers, good big floating point numbers, but the actual transform isn't. Um, so this is a whole system designed around being able to have very large scenes and effectively changing it from you have 32 bit positions to 128 bit because there is the local XYZ, uh, which is already three doubles, and then uh, global XYZ, which is in uh, effectively uh, long, 64-bit longs. Um, is there 128-bit there? No, it's probably more than that. Oh yeah, sorry, yeah, 128-bit per um, XYZ. Um, which means it uh, definitely uses up more memory, but you aren't representing each vertex like it. Uh, but yeah, those global XYZs are in like large cell sizes, so I think it's roughly 500,000 or something. Um, Anyway, it's a big thing. Um, <laughs> you get some weird, I think, yeah, this post-processing gets a weird thing going on there. Anyway, it's interesting. Doesn't happen in the game. So, yes. As you can see, we've done all that moving and the ship's uh, XYZ has barely changed from the origin. So, it took a bit of time to get that all working, especially with having, you know, the fact that you can you know, be a player and you pop out of the ship and now the player has to become the center of this whole scene. Um, how far do I have to go before it'll pop back? Oh, moving up and down moves very quickly. There we go. Moving up and down moves quickly. Because <laughs> my up and down velocity isn't uh, bound like it should be, so you can probably move faster moving up and down as a player. Anyway, um, yeah. So that really leads to the only other issue being uh, Z fighting. So that's where I also have two cameras, um, which will be under here. So I have the main camera, which goes between 0 0.1 and 500. Ooh main camera. I don't think that's what the main camera looks like. Um, which then has a whole issue of it. The only thing it clears is the depth buffer. So, you know, don't have issues, things being in front and behind, because we know anything past 500 isn't going to be, you know, it's always going to be behind. Um, but then because we also have the issue that the uh, vertex outline or the edge outline effect is done with 
the depth buffer. So now you're combining two depth buffers into one and you get some weird effects going on. So maybe that whole edge highlighting effect needs to be rethought how I handle it. Anyway, I'm going to have to edit this down, aren't I? Yeah, anyway. Anyway, um, main thing I really wanted to get out of this was to have it that you can go zoom, put this, put that on, keep the throttle up, go back, look out a window, you know, maybe look here, look out, sit back, do something in your ship while your ship flies. I don't want the space to feel too empty, but I still want to have a sense of scale. So I'm still going to be playing around with like how big everything is, because you know, you have it too big, it's just fill, it's just literally nothing. Um, and that's you know, pointless, so. Yeah, anyway, uh, lots to play around with, lots to think about, but you know, between having alternate directions of gravity, which kind of expands the kind of space station designs or even ship designs that I want, um, to these large scale star systems. I mean, in theory, I could have that every star system is in the one map, right? Because this, this works for up to light years and distance, this floating point origin. Um, but uh, do I really want that? Like, that's that's excessive. I, would, you know, <laughs> I do have to think about scope at some point, right? Uh, yeah, anyway, I'll um, see you in the next one. Uh, maybe I'll go show you that gas giant next time. Anyway, see ya.